everybody, welcome along to Sportsbet TV as we look forward to Saturday the 15th of June where I have one selection for you on this free service at Sportsbet. Uh, of course, next week we're going to be heading to Royal Ascot, five amazing days of great racing and strong markets. Um, and that means the selections won't automatically tumble in price when we have a few bob on. I'll be having extensive coverage of Royal Ascot next week. Um, I'll be covering each and every one of the five days and at out in front I'll be offering uh, uh, quite a number of tips each and every day while still offering at least one tip and um, sometimes two here for free at Sportsbet. As we draw now amazingly towards the end of our fourth year of the service since we started out and if you happen to be um, finding us um, uh, for the first time the pre press the subscribe key just below this screen. You'll be able to keep in touch with all my free tips for nothing. We're always looking for horses that are each way prices. And that was the case last week in the case of Billy B. Now, uh, when I recommended Billy B, it was a six to one shot, having been backed earlier from nine and 10 to one. It was then duly the subject of a major on and off course gamble. And eventually it won at Beverly last Saturday, very, very convincingly, but had been backed all the way down to nine to four favorite. And uh, I explained why I thought he would uh, go really well and he duly obliged. So to so those of you that happen to be harping on about uh, tipping a favorite and not each way odds, Remember that when I tipped it, it was an each way prize. And if you're not quick enough to get on, that's an issue you have to take up with yourself. Uh, he was six to one when I selected him. And I certainly can't be held accountable for other people joining in the gamble uh, on the horse. That's why you should always try and view the uh, video as early as possible. Or even better, uh, sign up for my out in front service where you get the uh, information uh, red hot and you're able to have half a chance of beating the odds and beating the bookies. Uh, if you want to sign up to Out in Front and it's only £25 a month, we've got ex a really extensive coverage of Royal Ascot and then going forward through all the major summer meetings uh, then there's a link in the description box just below this screen where you can sign up uh, with no tie-in. Uh, it's just a month to month as you please and most people um, stay with me month to month and are enjoying doing so, making profits. I'm going to take you to my one selection and I've certainly picked out a race that was by no means easy. It's at York on Saturday, the 225 race, a seven furlong handicap. The going was forecast good, it's a possibility it might ease if the rain uh, really does get into the ground, 20 runners. And at first glance, uh, this race looks impossible. Uh, at second glance, it doesn't actually look that much easier because they're betting seven to one the field last time I looked in what is a really well contested handicap. But most firms are paying at least five places and plenty of going six and one is even going seven. So there's lots of each way value in this race. And I want to ha highlight just half a dozen horses of the 20 who should be there or thereabouts in a race where you really can, uh, depending on your point of view and how you assess form, and make a case for virtually all of the 20 runners. Now, among the market leaders, and we haven't got, uh, we didn't have many, they were quite late pricing up for this one actually. Among the market leaders, um, the David O'Mara trained new image I expect to go well on the back of a comfortable win at Musselburgh in Scotland last time out, and the Saturday's Apprentice Rider who seems to get on really well with this horse. Now the pair bossed that race at Musselburgh and he won with plenty in hand, so he should still be very much on the premises, despite a four pound race in the rise in the weights, but will he be able to uh, dominate in quite the way that he did at Muscle? But we'll see. Welvin, who's trained by Michael Dodds, has only won once at the track, and that was over the course of distance as a juvenile way back in 2018. But this veteran nowadays has run well on most occasions, he's been sent into battle on the Navesmire. And he caught the eye at the main meeting when he came from a long way back to stay on into fourth and 21 in the six furlong handicap won by Ali's dancer. And I think the extra furlong will help his cause. And I think he's got every chance of being in the mix again. Eligible, trained by Mick and David Easterby, won over the course and distance in May of last year and is now two pounds lower before the seven pound claim of the young apprentice rider Lewis Chalkley. Now he ran well back at York's May meeting last month when a decent seventh behind Riot and then he appeared not to really be suited by the trap but a bit below par at Beverly last week. 
So I wouldn't be surprised to see him do much better back at this flatter, more galloping track. And I'm sure a lot of you will have noticed in this race the booking of Ryan Moore for the Ian Williams trained at Alto. And that's why he's one of the market principals. It suggests connections are hoping for a big run and the four-year-old hasn't done a lot wrong on his last two starts, finishing second and fourth into pretty hot handicaps over a mile. I think it'll be interesting to see how he fares dropping back in trip. While of the rest of them, Harriet Bethel's Yanifer it was a course and distance winner last October on easy ground, so any rain will help him. Shaped really nicely when third last time out at Chester, and Yanifer's turn may not be too far away. So on to my selection in this 225 at York. And in what is a really tough race, I think there could be some value in backing the Mickey Hammond train Carnival Zane, on whom the good young apprentice Aidan Brooks claims a valuable five pounds. Now, Carnival Zane is a winner of six of his 33 races. He's ideally suited by good ground, even good to firm. He had a stellar 2022 season where he won five handicaps, which is, um, you know, some going for any horse in one season. And he duly went up the weights by £25. And having gone up the weights so much in the 2022 season, it wasn't really a great surprise to see that last season he found things tough off his high mark. And as a result, he drew a blank and eventually dropped £11, beginning this season off a mark of 80. And he returned to the fray this year at York over this trip last month on the back of a near 10-month absence. And in the circumstances, he ran a race full of promise in finishing 7th of 18 to feel the need, beaten less than five lengths, despite being denied a clear run over a furlong out when he was just gaining momentum and staying on steadily. Now, I think that that run should put him spot on for this. I'm hoping most of the rain stays away. Good ground would be ideal. Good, good to soft in places I wouldn't be worried about. And up for one pound lower mark now than at uh, the, the track last time out, he is 25 to one each way for six places at the time of this recording on uh, Friday afternoon. And that's with Betfair Sportsbook and Paddy Power. And I think Carnival Zane for Mickey Hammond and Aidan Brooks will run much better than the market currently suggests. So Carnival Zane is my choice for you for Saturday. If you're interested in more tips for Saturday from me, check out Out In Front by clicking on the link in the description box just below this screen. Now, I'll be bringing you my tips uh, for each and every race of Royal Ascot starting on Monday. I'll be with you um, uh, recording the message sometime around half past six. So it'll be with you all being well, no later than seven o'clock. And uh, let's hope that we have a great um, meeting all five days. And I'll be recording Monday uh, evening for Tuesday, Tuesday for Wednesday, so on and so on, through to Friday for the final day of Royal Ascot next Saturday, the 22nd. I hope you have a great weekend. And I do hope you're going to join me and tell your friends because we've got a pretty good record of these big meetings. And uh, I'm uh, more than hopeful that we're going to be in profit at the end of Royal Ascot 2024. Bye-bye for now.